Well, here we are. Welcome back, and thanks for starting off another week. Good Monday to you. This one falling on the first day of May, and we're going to start off the month of May, and for the next several days of it, just as I told you last, on a much cooler, cooler trend. We're going to do so after the warmest month of April ever on record at the offices of the National Weather Service in Jackson and London. And here we are tonight, starting off May on a much cooler note, a strong storm system bringing us cooler air for the entire forecast period. Today's the peak temperature wise. And it's also bringing us some significant chances throughout the work week. I've got 53, 54 degrees maybe by this Friday. Yes, a bit cooler, big difference as the weather is trending in that direction. I'll outline it for you in more detail in just a few moments. Tonight's show is going to be brief for a very good reason and one I'll elaborate more on in just a second. Our top story and perhaps only story with the exception of weather, calendar, and other announcements will be one near and dear to my heart, one that I have covered all weekend, mostly from the couch, mind you, with the exception of edit today, but one that will interest a lot of families out there because I know a lot of you have a child, a grandchild, niece, something of that nature, who made it to the world stage in dance down in Orlando at Disney over the course of the weekend with the Dance Etc. Senior Elite Team. And yes, Lacey, a part of that team, as I think most everyone probably well aware, and yes, this is where you're going to find out just how well they did. They made history for the studio, and I'll be glad to share you some of their dance, uh, some remarks from Jody, some of the girls, in just a few moments. But before all that, just a brief mention as to uh, the reason for tonight's show being brief from this point further. I spent several hours this morning and this afternoon with hundreds of other people who were saying goodbye to a McGoffin County man who passed away since I saw you last. Mike Prater died on Friday night of Prater's Tax Service. Uh, my dad's best friend and business partner, Mike, whose house I spent countless days and nights at growing up and who started teaching me tennis in the sixth grade and who from there on through high school uh, toted me around with the rest of the McGoffin County High School tennis team. Some of the best memories from my teenage years spent with him in that little bus and that team. He was also a man who then and for years after relentlessly wiped me out on the court. Uh, those few times that I got close to winning a game, not a match but a game, were wins for me. Uh, the sport of tennis, I owe him as I do a lot of other fond memories uh, spent with he and David and the family. Mike passed away Friday night after a serious illness and was laid to rest earlier today. And We'll have a few words to say about him in our obituaries in just a few moments. And I'll get to tonight's top and basically only headline in just a few seconds after just a few words from some of our sponsors. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Well, I can't tell you how proud I am and how happy I am to bring you this following report. Dance Etc., the studio's been around since Jody Shepard started it back in 1994. My daughter Lacey has been a part of that studio for the majority of its existence. She joined at the very young age of three, and it's been a part of our lives ever since, a big part. When you're asked to join the Dance Etc. elite team, it's a traveling team. It's a lot of time. A lot of practice on her, a lot of long hours, year-round. They literally will start working on, uh, in two weeks from now, the next season with their goal, as it has been for the past five or six years, to make it to the world stage, the Dance Worlds competition in Orlando at Disney, as they have for the past five years, counting this one. It has truly been a, a big part of her life and ours, a lot of traveling, a lot of time, uh, and a, a lot of fun. Uh, tears and joy along the way. And this story tonight is about their most recent trip to the Dance Worlds, where they have been on four other occasions. But this one turned out unlike any other. And that's a very good thing. By now, most everyone watching this has at least heard of the Dance Etc. Studio in Prestonsburg, owned and operated by Jody Shepard. And most have some sort of a direct relationship, whether it be through a child, a 
grandchild. And then if you take into consideration friends and neighbors, well, I think everyone very well aware of the studio. For myself, Lacey joined at the young age of three. By the time she made it to second grade, she was asked to participate in the Dance Etc. Elite Team, the traveling competition team for which she has been a member for 11 years now. And graduating high school was the only thing that's going to keep her from being on the team. Lacey, just one of hundreds if not thousands of young ladies which have come through the doors of the studio over the years, representing a host of counties, McGoffin, Johnson, Floyd, Martin, and more in the region. The elite team, the traveling competition team on an annual basis, well, it's a lot. It takes them to Gatlinburg, Cleveland, Baltimore, Myrtle Beach, just to name a few, all where they work year-round hoping to compete and then win at that level and get a bid to the Worlds, the World Competition in Orlando, Florida, in Disney, where they are right now for their fifth year. But this year was a little different. The four trips prior, they got to Worlds on a single bid, a single routine, one year on two. This year, all four routines earned them a bid to dance worlds. So they took their small jazz, large jazz, lyrical, and palm routines to Disney where they have competed over the course of Saturday and Sunday. They being Lacey Mortimer, Kaylee Williams, Madison Lowe, Maddie Stanley, Molly Francis, Morgan Gerald, Shelby Tolles, Mackenzie Castle, Rihanna Wallen, Rachel Burchett, Carly Maynard, Lindsey Markham, Caitlin Wright, Lexi Wheeler, McKinley Smith, Emily West, Taylor Stumbo, Allison Horn, Lindsey Campbell, Reagan Sammons, Haley Hamilton, McKenna Pelfrey, Brianna Poe, Chelsea Collinsworth, and I think I got them all. Five counties represented in all. With each and all, I think, maybe not expecting this to be their year. They'd never made it past the first round, never advanced to finals, but always came home feeling thrilled and appreciative and accomplished to just have been there on that level. But this year, their lyrical dance put them among 28 other teams in that category, 14 of which made the cut and made it to finals. And after those 14 were announced to make it to the finals, they brought the top 10 on stage and from there announced the places that they had finished with Dance Etc knowing they had at least a 10th place finish as they stood among teams from all over the world, Japan, China, Ecuador, Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, Scotland, Canada, Germany, and the list does indeed go on. Congratulations to, in no particular order, Champions Legacy. Great job, Dance Etc. The ladies from Dance Etc. called to the top 10, the final stage after literally years of work by this team and others. Oh, it's, it's a lot of work and you've got people from not just all over the United States, but other countries going to these bid giving, you know, events trying to qualify for this. So just even getting here is a win in itself because it's really hard to even get a bid to be accepted to come to the competition. What was it about either this routine or this group of girls or both that uh, got you got you to the peak of this past five years? Oh, I think it's every, it's both. It's it's everything, and it's all the dancers that have come before them these past five years. Because every year, you know, we've learned and what we need to do to be better and push harder. And I mean, I remember coming the first year and being in 32nd place. I mean, we had no idea what we were facing and what we were up against. So it's it's really pushed them to work harder and their goal has been to make it to finals and so when they did that this year they and then even above that made top 10 and then eighth place that was just a dream come true for these kids in eighth place with a spectacular performance today congratulations dance etc eight senior elite You know, I, I can want it so bad for them, but I can't give it to them. They, ha you know, they have to earn it, and they knew that, and they've worked so hard. But even as well as they did, which this is the best they've ever done. I mean, they're just so talented. It's the best they've ever looked here. But even with that, everyone is so talented. So every team that took the stage, we were like, oh, wow, they're good. They're good, too. They're good, too. So we really thought it was going to be a long shot to make it in the finals. We were hoping, we were hopeful, but, you know, everybody was so good. So when we did, we were just shocked and then to find out out of the 14 that went to finals we were in eighth we were just wow so thankful <laughs>
I know that towards as it got closer, they started to have a realization that it was possible this time. Yes, and um, and actually, I remember you know Lacey, one of our seniors, telling our girls, "Look, you guys don't realize because it is easy." to lose hope because everybody's so good. You think, you know, we don't have a chance. We're just a spoiled team from Eastern Kentucky, but we really, you know, we were trying to make them understand and she was trying to make them understand that you really do. You don't understand how talented and you guys are and how close you are. And we kept trying to tell them that. Like, you're, you know, you've worked really hard too. You know, just as hard as anybody else. You deserve this just as much as anybody else. You just have to believe it. You can do it, and I think they finally did, and they really, you know, got serious and started working hard, especially right here at the end. Even when we, since we've been in Florida within the past couple of days, they've been working and pushing and practicing and, you know, believing they could do it, I guess. I'm just so thankful for the opportunity to work with them and so thankful to be able to bring him, them here and them to be able to experience this. It's, it's really an experience like any other, and I'm, I'm so glad to see them get some success and some recognition you know after all these years and now I know it's just going to push the future dancers even harder to live up to this bar and then to even hopefully achieve above that. In our Lyrico representing Kentucky the senior lead of dance etc. <laughs> it was an honor to make it to finals and receive eighth place out of the best team in the world and we want to say thank you to everyone who supported us. A new week does mean a new community calendar. As always, the following announcements brought to you by McGoffin Farm Bureau, your local agent, Doug Green, tonight starting off with a found puppy that we hope to reunite with his family. Yes, I've got a viewer that has found a dog. It's a small dog, a male dog. It's a black, tan, and white dog that's also wearing a collar, but the collar, the collar doesn't have any ID or name on it or anything of that nature. It's friendly. They say obviously well taken care of. And if any of this sounds familiar, I don't have an area in the county that it was found, but I do have a phone number, 349-7397. A small male dog, collar, no name, black, tan, and white, 349-7397. Looking for something good to eat any day? How about this Wednesday and a good cause to support? The Holiness House of Prayer is putting together a spaghetti dinner for this Wednesday, 10 till 2. That should cover, technically that could cover breakfast and lunch, or both maybe even. They've got spaghetti, green beans, garlic bread, and a brownie for just 6 bucks. Now you can call or text to get your order in. Now or the day of, on Wednesday, 4967006. And they want to welcome you Thursday for Bible study at 6 and services at 7. And Sunday evening services are also held at the Holiness House of Prayer at 6 as well. And kids in grades K through 11, you can elevate your basketball game with Court Vision, one of the latest tools to help you on the court. Also, fundamentals, work ethics, handling, finish work, and more, taught by former Lady Hornet coach Scott Castle, his daughter, former player and current U Pike player Jamie Castle, giving the instructions Sundays, K through four, those grades at two thirty for an hour, and five through eleven at three thirty for an hour. Five bucks per hour, a very small investment for a big impact, and it's going to be at North McGoffin Elementary. You don't have to even. A, I started to say apply. You don't have to have an appointment. You can just show up, and that's Sundays at North. And that's it for tonight's calendar. We've got a few announcements piling up for later on the week. We'll hold on to those for a day or so. Gives me one quick or time for one quick reminder. Birthdays and anniversaries and announcements like you just heard for your church or group or nonprofit and such. You can mail them, email them, Facebook, phone, fax, or drop them off here at the studio just above the Sagersville Post Office on East Maple. And remember, our programming is always on our website at yournewstoday.com and our YouTube channel at Your News Today by Rit Mortimer. As I mentioned at the top of the program, services were held earlier today in Sagersville for Charles Michael Prater. Mike, 71, of Helton Branch Road, passed away on Saturday morning. He was married to Glistina Helton Prater, who survives, and Mike is also survived by his kids, David Prater, Jessica Arnett, and Erica Cobb. 
burial was held at the Helton Cemetery at Coon Creek while the McGoffa County Funeral Home was in charge of arrangements. Once again, Mike Prater of Prater's Tax Service passed away at the age of 71 and laid to rest earlier today. And I've just been notified of the passing of 81-year-old Desi Howard Francis Bailey of Rocklick Road, who passed away on yesterday. Surviving are sons Ray, Terry, and Tommy Francis, and daughters Wilma Ward and Shirley Rudd. Visitation is going to be this Wednesday at 5. It will continue that evening all day Thursday and up until services. They're going to be Friday at 2, all from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. If you missed the first few seconds of the show, you missed me saying that we are coming off the warmest April on record at both the London and Jackson offices of the National Weather Service. And here we are looking at a downhill slide from 75 or so today to about 53, 54 on your Friday, a gradual decline that after today we'll fail to see the 70s. Just never know what Kentucky weather is going to throw at you. For tonight, after some clouds and some showers and some sun and some wind thus far, I think we'll see clouds back on the increase. And a low of around, I've got 65 degrees. Pay zero attention to that. A low around 49 tonight. And breezy with winds out of the west, still kicking about 13 to 29 miles per hour at times. I had a 26 mile per hour blow just a few moments ago, clocking it right now. Due west, uh, nine, nine miles an hour. For your tomorrow, a bit cooler, and there starts the trend. 70 degrees for your Tuesday. Mostly sunny, but 70, breezy. That wind still out of the west, still anywhere from 13 to 21 miles, 13 to 31 miles per hour, mind you, tomorrow. So another breezy day. Kite salesman raking it in this week, at least the first part. For your Wednesday, increasing clouds, daytime highs take a hit to the tune of 5 degrees down to 65. That west northwest wind by then down to about 3 to 5, finally becoming almost null and void. With the exception of a 40% chance of some showers and thunderstorms, mainly after 10 or 11 o'clock right now looks to be the window on Wednesday night. Thursday, temperatures will hold steady in the mid-60s, 65, 67 before they take another dive. 67, 45 Thursday, clouds, showers, likely, very likely. Ditto for your Friday, 54 and 41 for your high and low. Clouds, showers, and 50s will make for a dreary end to the work week. As for your weekend, well, Saturday still shaking, trying to shake the 50s, can't quite with partly sunny skies and a 30% chance of showers. Sunday, we start a slow climb at 61 and mostly sunny and 64 and mostly sunny by your next Monday. So with the exception of today and tomorrow, we're on a downhill slide starting at 67 uh, on, well, getting to 67 on your Thursday. And then from there, we'll see the 50s and 60s through at least the beginning of next week. Well, that's going to wrap it up for tonight. I look to be back tomorrow night with our regular programming, at least as regular as it ever is. Thank you so much for being a part of the program, and I can tell you that it looks to be just as it always does. looks to be a busy week news-wise. We'll be covering a lot for you beginning when we see you back here next time. For now, please enjoy the rest of your Monday, and have a good night.